Do you want to take shots of landscapes, stars, or moons, and need to focus to infinity, but have a kit lens like this one right here, which is the 18-55 to attached to the D3400, and it does not have an infinity indicator? Then stay tuned, this video is for you. I've received a lot of questions on how to focus to infinity, so I thought I'd create a quick video to hopefully help you out. I'm going to start off by what is focus to infinity, then I'm going to move into why you'd want to use it, and then I'm going to touch on what are some of the problems with modern day lenses, and I'm going to talk about how I focus to infinity. I'm going to touch on a topic called hyperfocal distance and then I'm going to do a quick demo on an application that can help you out and finish up with a few final thoughts. Now that sounds like a lot, but I promise this is going to be relatively quick, so fasten your seatbelts and let's have some fun. What is focus to infinity? It's when you take your camera and you focus on a subject and from that point to infinity, so as far as your eye can see, everything is in focus. Why would you want to use it? Typically you use it on landscape shots. Think about shooting a mountain group or stars or the moon or anything that is far away. You will typically want to focus to infinity. What are some of the challenges with modern day lenses? Well, to begin with, this right here is the fixed 50 Nikon lens. Most lenses on the market today will have some kind of manual focus ring on the outside of the lens, just like this right here. It has a distance indicator on it, and on the far side is the symbol for infinity. Now, I don't know how well we can see it, but it's right beneath my finger here. And it kind of looks like the number eight that is laying on its side. That's the symbol for infinity. So, the challenge comes into play with a lens like this. Now, this is the kit lens that's attached to the Nikon D3400. This is the 18-55. to and on the outside of this lens, you have a manual focus ring. Now this moves smoothly and it turns 360 degrees. Unfortunately, there is no distance indicator and there is no stop point for infinity. Now that creates a problem when you wanna find infinity. So what do I do to find infinity? Well, on lenses that have distance indicators and a stop point for infinity, you might think you would just move into manual focus mode and slide back to infinity. Now many photographers out there might say, the point to infinity on these lenses is really not infinity. You want to go to the infinity indicator and then come back just a little bit. Now what is just a little bit? Well, for me it's about a sixteenth of an inch. I've always found that to be a sweet spot for infinity. Now rather than try to come back a random distance to find that sweet spot, what do I do? 99% of the time, I leverage autofocus to find infinity. I find it always to be a better approach. And it's the exact same for a lens like this on the Nikon D3400. Even though you do not have an indicator to find infinity, again, I use autofocus. Some people will say on various lenses out there that do not have infinity indicator stop points that you might be able to use something like some nail polish or a visual indicator of some sort to leverage autofocus to find infinity and then mark it on the lens. On this lens right here, the outer ring does not move when you leverage autofocus, so using a visual indicator will not work. So how, do, how does this happen? How do, we, how do we do this in autofocus? What I typically do is when I'm in autofocus and I have a landscape shot to shoot, I go into aperture mode and I'll use a relatively high number, like 20 or 22. This closes that aperture down quite a bit. And I will focus on anything that's relatively far away from me. So it might be a tree, a lamppost, anything that's got light on it, I will lock focus on it. Now, as many of you know, if you subscribe to my channel, I use back button focus here. So once I lock the focus down, I take my thumb off and I'm in good shape and I'm now focused to infinity. And I can take my landscape shot. So that's what I do, and it, it's worked well for me over the years, and I continue to use it. Something I'm going to talk about real quick is something called hyperfocal distance. Now, I've touched on this before in another video called Depth of Field. I'm going to post a link in the description below 
If you haven't seen that video, take a few moments and watch it because I think it'll really help you out. But what is hyperfocal distance? This is an important concept to understand and it's not too difficult to understand. Just follow me on this right here. So what is hyperfocal distance? It's the point at which you can focus and half that distance to infinity will remain in focus. Again, I'm gonna say that, here we go. Hyperfocal distance is the point to which you focus and half that distance to infinity is in focus. Well, how's it determined? It's determined on two primary factors, your zoom and your f-stop. So those two will determine your hyperfocal distance and there's a mathematical formula to make that happen. Now, I don't wanna lose you in that formula and I'm just gonna say this. There are applications out there in sites that can quickly identify that hyperfocal distance for you. Now, I mentioned this in that depth of field video and one of the applications that I use is called Hyperfocal Pro. Now, I'm in no way affiliated with them nor the company that produces that software, but I find that application to be helpful. And what I'm gonna do right now is just show you a quick demo of that application. I've downloaded the Hyperfocal application right here on my Samsung Galaxy S5. Now, this is a relatively old phone, but it's what I have at my disposal and it works well for me. So inside this application, there's a key section right up here at the top that we're gonna dive into relatively quick. And what we really wanna pay attention to is the hyperfocal distance right here where my thumb is. Now to begin with, you wanna start off by selecting the camera type. Now you'll notice I have the Nikon D3300 selected. There are many options in here, but the D3400 is not one of them. But what you'll wanna do is come in and select the camera that is closest to the one that you have. The lens right here is how far zoomed in are you? Now you can see many options here. And when you shoot landscape photography, you don't have to get exact and choose 47, 48, 49. I just chose 50 because it's a nice solid number. Now on the aperture, I like to go with a, a higher number and close up that aperture. In this case, I'm showing F22. Now when it comes down to the subject distance, this is if you were taking a portrait, for example, or a subject that's relatively close. This application provides additional information down here in this section. Now I touch on this information in the depth of field video, so I will not get into that. But what I do wanna point out is our hyperfocal distance is saying that we are at 19.44 feet. So what this means is that based on our lens and the aperture, this is telling us that we need to focus at an object that is 19.44 feet out so that we can get infinity focus. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So right here, our subject distance. If I change this to say 20 feet, meaning that we are going to focus on something that's 20 feet out, you can see in the chart down here, what this is telling us is that we have met our hyperfocal distance and that we can focus to infinity. You can see this little graph down here, that's exactly what this tells us. And it's saying that half that distance, roughly, at 9.976 feet to infinity, we will be in focus. Now you can play with these numbers up here and see what this does. For example, if we take our aperture and let's say we move this down to an F8. Now our hypofocal distance is now 54 feet. This would mean that we need to focus on an object that is at least 54 feet away from us in order to achieve infinity focus. So let's do that. I'm gonna change the distance to subject and let's go all the way out to 50, we can go 54, 55 feet, somewhere in that range, 56, there you go. So you can see down here in the chart that we are actually in focus starting at 27.788 feet all the way to infinity. A quick final thought on focus to infinity is this. Keep it simple. You don't always have to use an application to determine the hyperfocal distance and be exact about it. It's a relatively loose understanding and as long as you understand the concept you'll be in good shape. Go into aperture mode, use a relatively high number, and focus on anything that is relatively far away and you'll be in good shape. I hope this video has helped you out and if it has, be sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't done so, subscribe to the channel. It's called Real World. More often than not, I post videos about photography and technology, but you never know. So until the next video, 
Take care of yourself and be safe.